But now, the real goal of this video, <laughs> you're about to step your Thanksgiving game up to another notch with this video. What are we making, right? I'm not proud of this recipe <laughs> whatsoever. Chewy, y'all. Between chicken hocks, a, what was either a fox or a coyote or a bobcat, wise words. Um, it's been a nuts day. So it started out with we were all hanging out outside while I was working. The dogs went nuts and Wally goes, oh my gosh, a coyote. So like I rush everyone in the house and of course it's gone, I don't see it. Um, and then Wally's like, he was like this big. It might've been a fox, might've been a bobcat. Um, I said, was it a dog? He said, no, it wasn't a dog. I know what dogs look like. It was definitely probably a fox. Um, and so I was like, well, the dogs, they go nuts. Um, they see squirrels and rabbits and stray dogs and they don't lose it like they lost it today. So I have to take that there was potentially a fox or something just hanging out over there. So to calm that situation, then next thing I know, there's a chicken hawk out here. Um, so we're trying to run it off, uh, doing all that good stuff. Can't figure it all out. Somebody's knocking on the door. Uh, that's Jen, but she can see me up there. <laughs> They're all waving at y'all. <laughs> um, so then uh, we got it out of there. And then guess what showed up? You better believe it. It is fencing time. So I'm not exactly sure when you're all going to see this video, um, but we're going to start the fencing project tomorrow. And I am so excited. Um, we are also going out of town um, just for the day for Jen's birthday. Um, so that's going to be really exciting. So I'm excited to come back and see what was done. Um, but right now, finally, as the sun's setting, it's feeding time. feed now one thing that i've been doing is when i film doing chores there's usually somebody with me i'm going to try doing it with you all i can almost guarantee you all will fall down a couple times in this trip um, but hold on and hopefully the mic holds on this time okay i'm here i'm here let me get the gate open don't tear the buckets out of my hands please all right we're in Okay, watch, watch. <laughs> right, quit cutting me off, go up the hill. Gosh, butters. They're, they're nuts. <laughs> and these two always stay right on my side. All right, let's go goats. See what I mean when they left? How crazy they are about feed. Yeah. They, they weren't anywhere close. Oh, y'all about killed me coming up this hill. All right, hang on now. Hang on now. Let me get a set up here. Let me get a set up. Oh, <laughs> Go chop, buddy. They keep hitting me in my leg. They're like, gotta be the first one to eat. All right, hopefully I can set y'all up here. Get out of there. Gone now. See, already almost lost. Nope, nope. Ah. <laughs> I know, I'm like. Tricky. You got a tricky goat. Hey, it's your chick. Hey, it's your chick. All right, Dolly, your turn. Your turn. 
much calmer once the goats finally eat. Come on. Come on. All right, we've had a lot of interest on how we make this work. Um, what I mean is petting the style and also electrical fence questions. So just real quick to recap, we feed everybody in here that's open goat feed. Um, so they do have access to hay, that is their primary source of food and grass. Um, but the reason that I feed evening and morning on a small scale, um, so for everything we got in here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think it's like eight goats, I don't even remember anymore. Seven goats, it's seven goats in here now. Um, and then, Upwards of 50 plus chickens. I think sometimes we exaggerate and say 100, um, but it's about it's probably 50 plus, maybe 75. Um, I do three scoops of goat feed. That's what they all get in the morning and in the evening. So it's not a whole lot because if you overfeed them feed, um, first off, they're gonna get bloated. Um, secondly, I don't want that to be their primary source of food. I want the grass and the hay to be their primary source. This is mainly routine. Give them some of the minerals that they need because Thank you. Um, it's mineral infused feed. Um, plus we have readily whenever they want minerals um, and they know when to take that. They take it only when they need it. So um, we do that for the chickens and the goats. Dolly right here gets regular dog food, but she doesn't get it all the time. We don't access it all the time um, because the chickens and then just butters likes to eat it. Um, she is aggressive when she wants it. So like if she wants her feed, Anna's about to knock it down. Um, she won't let anybody else eat it. But if she's full, she leaves it be. So you can't have dog food just laying out all the time for livestock guardian dogs. So she gets a full scoop of dog feed morning and evening and that promotes her to eat her food and not leave it sitting there for someone else to eat because it can be very harmful for dogs or for goats specifically. The pigs. What's up, pieces? Slapping them jaws, aren't you? All right, so they are still in this area. Um, however, we're about to change that. So we are gonna let mama and her one baby loose with the group. I know y'all are probably thinking, that's crazy. They can't live with chickens. They can. The chicken, <laughs> rooster's kinda does need. Um, chickens go in here all the time and hang out with them in the closed area. They've even laid eggs in there. Um, cooney coonies are not aggressive pigs. They're not gonna try to eat a chicken. They're not gonna try to do that stuff. You actually have more worries about your dog and your goats trampling them rather than you have to worry about the pigs doing anything with the chicken. So they are gonna to get to come out because they now know this is home. So they're gonna sleep in there um, and hang out and then we'll let them free range uh, during the day. But mama is on a starting to get on a schedule to be processed. But the biggest thing is, especially with cooney coonies, and I, I don't hold me on this on all uh, breeds of pigs because I'm sure some of those big feeders don't care. Um, they, like mama would get heartbroken if she lost all of her babies, no matter what the time. It doesn't matter if we did it early, late, it's still her babies. Um, and unfortunately, this is farming. So like if you want to farm or you want to homestead, this is part of it if you got livestock going on and you're wanting to feed your family. Um, the reason we're letting them out is because when mama goes to the butcher, baby pig, who we're gonna grow out for next year, um, will basically become a chicken. And what I mean by that is uh, she will be acquainted with the chickens, the goats and all that stuff. Um, and will not have that depression of being alone. So that's our goal for them. We'll probably let them out this weekend so we can watch them and make sure everything's good. Um, but that's how we make this petting zoo slash Charlotte's Web round two functional. All right, y'all. See ya. I'm out. Talk to you in the morning. Like, see, even the goats right there, kind of hard to tell, but they're down there. They're already eating hay. Um, they just, like, it's it's a mind thing. There's still food available, um, but because I give them so little, they just want to taste it, you know? They just want to taste it, and they go right back to their hay and their grass. So, I just, I don't, I'm not saying it's the exact way or the perfect way to do it, but it works for us, so there you go. Why are you following me, butters? Why are you following me, girl? 
I ain't got no more food. Watch it. You are so greedy. So greedy. You always want more. Hi, Dobby. But, and then there's greedy number two, Elsa. There ain't nothing in there. Go on about, about your bad self, wild and wonderful West Virginia. And then the lover, Anna. Bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay, and we've received a lot of questions about how we trained our animals on electric fans, um, but that's gonna have to wait for another video because this is a cooking video, technically. Um, but stay tuned, I have heard your all's request and we will discuss it in the very near future. Okay, so you got a little quick snippet of the animals because who doesn't love adorable goats and chickens? Yeah. But now, the real goal of this video <laughs> You're about to step your Thanksgiving game up to another notch with this video. What are we making, uh, babe? I'm not proud of this recipe <laughs> whatsoever. It's, it's Thanksgiving. Quite a shame. It's Thanksgiving. I'm ashamed of what I'm about to show you, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway because it's so good. And if you listen, if you're health conscious, if you're having a healthy Thanksgiving, don't do it. But yeah, you can go and cut this recipe right out the window. And you're just cutting all that out because it's Thanksgiving and it's the time of year, then. You might like it. <laughs> so it is deep fried deviled egg time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's get into it. So we have already boiled our eggs, which were fresh eggs. And I know you saw me struggle in the pickled egg video, but I have learned now. I know how to do it. Um, thank you to all your suggestions. I've never got it down pat. <laughs> there was a lot of them. <laughs> there was. So I did six because uh, it's just me and Zach. And you know, it's not actually Thanksgiving. Um, and I've got our dry ingredients and our eggs ready. But first, I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna do, just like regular deviled eggs. You're gonna split it in half. So I guess technically they'll make 12, so that's still a lot for me and Zach, but we love them, so. Well, maybe the kids will try them. We never try them. Right. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> well, let's not get that oval. <laughs> <laughs> all right, she's gonna hurry up and cut them up and then we'll show you the next step. While you're preparing and getting all this stuff happening, go ahead and get your oil going. So we did about an inch, I would say, in the cast iron pan, um, because you don't want them completely just covered in grease. You want to be able to flip them. Uh, so go ahead and get that warming up, because you want good hot oil so you can get nice, crisp, ground this still. Okay, and then you're gonna scoop all your yolks out very carefully, because with fresh eggs, they can be really delicate. <laughs> not to try to break that what do you call the white just the egg white yeah yeah and look at those yolks y'all mm -hmm. they're so vibrant those There's, are some happy chickens that's right nothing like a nice fresh egg for your deviled eggs that's right Okay, now you're gonna get a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of breadcrumbs. I just like regular, not Italian. Pour it into a bowl, and then we're gonna mix it up. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, and then I get a small bowl of another two eggs for your bonding. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna do this part because I don't like to fry. <laughs> <laughs> you go egg wash. Easy with them, gentle. I'm trying to eat. <laughs> Straight in. And kind of how I like to do it, is since, especially since we have such a big bowl, get a bunch in your egg wash, throw a bunch, bunch in there. Just makes it a little less messy. So I'm gonna quickly get some of these in here. Okay, and then once they're got their egg wash on them, you just wanna kind of toss them. You don't want it to be like, crazy battered you know what i mean it's like a light coated so just about like that just kind of toss them around be a little bit more gentle than i am with them one thing about when you're deep frying you kind of want to keep like a clean hand and a dirty hand <laughs> um, is how i do it so like this one's the one like i work other stuff with and this is the one i get in the egg wash because I always seem to start with tongs, they never last. Yeah. 
Ready? Okay, once you've got them all breaded and you got nice hot grease, this is gonna sizzle. Sizzle. You just stick them right in. Oh, look at that beautifulness. And so you're just gonna let them run, what do we say, about a minute? Uh, that's it to you. So here's the thing. Zach's the fry guy. When you deep fry, <laughs> you don't really need to know time. Right. You need to know color. Exactly. And so the deep fry color is golden brown. Thank you, Red Lobster. Back <laughs> in my college days. What were you called? I was a fry guy. No, it started with a B. No, that was Dairy Queen. I was a well, fry. we both were Dairy Queen. What was it called? Razor. Razor. That's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I've had several cooking times in my day. So see, you can tell they go quick. Look at this here. So a minute was way off. I was Super right. quick. It's all about the color. And it helps because you have really hot grease. Right. Um, that's your biggest indicator. If you put it in there, they get soggy. That grease really just soaks in. You don't want that. I mean, even though this is unhealthy, you don't want a big old pile of yeah. All right, so let that run for just a second. So we have this fancy cookie rack. That somebody uh, actually just sent me it. I yeah, it's so pretty much. cool. Thank so you. So anytime you deep fry anything, it is always better to put it on a rack to air dry. Uh, because if you sit it on a, a plate with a paper towel, usually whatever it's sitting on is going to get a little on the soggy side of things. I do not um, soggy. Yeah, nobody likes soggy. <laughs> so if you have one of these, I suggest one of them. However, if you don't, no biggie. Put it on a paper towel, let that grease drain off. Okay, so we've got our yolks that are in our bowl, and now this is just regular deviled egg mixture or whatever the filling that you put in. So we've got four tablespoons of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of mustard, two tablespoons of relish, a teaspoon of hot sauce, and then salt and pepper to taste. And we're just gonna mix it up really good. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Ew. Okay, so once you get that kind of mixed together a little bit, it looks gross, but it tastes really, really good. You're going to put it with your yolks and then kind of mash those yolks up and get everything mixed together. So we like to put the mixture in the fridge and just let these sit and cool for a little bit. Because if you put this mixture on those while they're really hot, it's just gonna melt and get gross. And you don't want that. So now it's ready. And we're just gonna scoop our mixture in just like a regular deviled egg. And then we actually don't use paprika on top. We're gonna show you what we do use. And it's life changing. Life changing. <laughs> <laughs> so paprika is really, really good and it's classic. We actually use tagine. It's one of our favorite seasonings that we put on everything. 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 And it's so good. And it really just gives it like, oh, that was a little too much. No. <laughs> okay, she's getting <laughs> good. Come out faster. It just gives it a little kick that you're just not used to, but that you didn't realize you were missing. Okay, so we're having grilled pork chops, which I think you saw a clip of that. That's also hanging on the rack, drying out. Uh, Brussels sprouts. And these beauties <laughs> but for the for this video we wanted to try one of these before we sit down and have dinner yeah. so I think it's first. Nice. oh my goodness we have to do it on camera so you don't think we're lying exactly <laughs> right. there we go see this guy that is the best thing ever ever <laughs> ever so obviously you love deviled eggs, right? I mean, who doesn't love deviled eggs? And then deep fried a deviled egg and then putting the sauce on top is like the most fantastic thing ever. So good. So good. Mm. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna take your Thanksgiving to the next level. Like we hear so many stories, because we do a lot of cooking. They're like, oh, I'm gonna make this recipe and beat my sisters or beat my brothers and show them up because I gotta bring a side dish. Like, we'll do deep fried deviled eggs, this is gonna do it. Like, you're gonna be the talk of the family that night after Thanksgiving dinner. Like, yes. I need more of those. So good. <laughs> so good. And get the tagine. Oh, the tagine. Get the paprika. Yeah. Get the tagine. So tagine has like a, like a lime aftertaste and it is fantastic. So let me try to get that focus now see what you said. There you go. 
So that is that is amazing stuff. It is like paprika. Yeah. Non deep fried deviled <laughs> eggs out of the pitcher, paprika, get out of here. Tajine and deep fried. Let's yep. do this thing. <laughs> so this is like officially our first recipe, recipe. video yeah. in this kitchen. It is. That's pretty cool. That's exciting. And what better time when it comes right rolling into Thanksgiving. So hopefully this helps you all plan a little bit more. If you have to bring a side dish, say, I got the devil eggs. <laughs> yeah, um, and we were actually talking earlier. Last year before Thanksgiving, the weeks leading up to it, I did so many recipes, like our favorite family mm -hmm. heirloom recipes. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, go check those out. I'm not gonna re-record them, but they are there in the vault. And then yeah. we'll probably upload them to Facebook at some point so you can see those too. Really good point because yeah. we we do have a playlist of cooking recipe videos and so I think we take all of them like Thanksgiving yeah. or something like that. But yes, so starting like tomorrow, we're gonna post on Facebook Stivers Homestead, not the Stop Tribe, Stivers Homestead page um, on Facebook that entire series. So make sure you're following us there. Yeah, and there'll be more, plenty more Thanksgiving recipes and just regular recipes. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, y'all. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to down below. Don't hate us for deep frying. Till next. <laughs> hey, you got you on Thanksgiving. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.